Stokowski is visited by the Canadian pianist Glenn Gould. Here he interviews Stokowski for a radio feature he is producing for the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. What would you like to do? Well, uh, I'm really at your disposal. I would like to ask some rather dopey sounding, very wide open questions which are in no way specific. Oh, we're going to talk to you, is that it? Yes. Mm -hmm. You're going to ask me questions? Yes. yes. Would you like to tell me the questions now, then I can begin to think? Ah, uh, well, right. I'm a little slow. You, well, you know, another thing that we can do, we can just sort of discuss one area at a time and stop tape and, and then talk about it a bit. And if we think of something else we'd like to say, yeah. go back and do it again. Right. That's, that's that. a very flexible way to get What's the first one? Um, well, Maestro, I have a um, recurring dream in which I dream myself into a situation where I'm the first known being on another planet. If you were, by some technological miracle, able to go tomorrow to a planet within the solar system where they had thinking creatures who had at the same time never experienced art, and you were the first artist there, and you were told, go ahead, you may create an artistic system for them. A, would you want to do it? B, what would you do? You speak of a solar system. Uh, I have the impression that there are many solar systems, that ours is uh, a very big one, but there are others which are much larger, and still others which again are larger. I have also the impression that not only is there endless space and endless mass of the, the solar systems that are in that space, but there's endless time and there is endless mental power like what is in a small sense in our minds in this little earth we live on that there are greater masses of mind of which ours is only a small part so i would do my best to give a clear impression to what other form of life there might be on that planet of what i think is beautiful and orderly what I think is creative and what I think is destructive. And it would be possible, I hope, to let them see what's happening on this earth, so much destruction and so little compared with that destruction that is creative because many minds who are in what we call war destruction those minds might have enormous creative power mr McLuhan would have it that sooner or later there will be no composers there will be no artists as separate individuals that we will all be part of one feedback process that the whole idea of the artist is who has this idea professor McLuhan who, who is Professor McLuhan? Oh, well, he's a rather fascinating gentleman who lives in Canada, but is a bit of a gadfly. He's all over the world now. Um, yes. Well, he has a right to his opinion. Uh, I think exactly the opposite. And I have the right to my opinion, too. Uh, he lives in Canada, and I live in the United States. Uh, he travels much in the world. I travel much in the world. So at least we're together as travelers. But otherwise, I disagree entirely with what he said. But what makes him think that? He thinks that we are returning to a pre-Renaissance attitude, um, an attitude that existed in the days before print culture, before books were widely distributed. He thinks that we're getting back into a kind of oral space. In which what makes him think that there were no poets and no artists before a certain period. There have always been persons on this earth and just as today some love beauty and order, it is quite possible that the so-called caveman had such ideas too. 
on his level, in his way, according to his idea of the best life of that time. Uh, we do not know how the caveman, at least I do not know how the caveman felt about life, but I doubt if Professor, what is his name, McLuhan? McLuhan. I doubt if he knows that either. Uh, 